Hi Physics 30s, Mr. Jugley here. Um, continuation of last lesson, so this is Unit 3, Lesson 2. Uh, still talking about graphing. Uh, I am now working from my home office, as you can see. Um, also working on a tablet, so it's a bit of a different experience for me, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, anyways, let's jump into it. Curve straightening. So the whole thing we talked about uh, in the last lesson was trying to make sense out of uh, scientific graphs. Uh, remember we had our manipulated variable always goes in the x-axis, our responding variable always goes in the y-axis. Still the same uh, true for today, just uh, a little bit more challenging in that we're looking at graphs that are, are not necessarily straight lines. So it's a little bit more difficult to analyze those graphs that are not straight lines, but uh, you know, honestly not that much difficult. Uh, the whole key is make it into a straight line, make it into that linear, not even linear, we're going to look at direct relationships here. The nice thing about a direct relationship uh, is it'll always go through our zero zero or through our uh, origin. So uh, to check this out and to kind of see how it works, uh, let's check out this experiment. So somebody doing this experiment uh, is changing the speed and measuring the resulting kinetic energy. So even from that statement, uh, we can go through and we can start to have a look at things like manipulated variable, responding, and control variables. So the speed is being changed, that's our manipulated variable, and the kinetic energy, EK, would be our responding variable, and then the control variable would be the mass. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, just even keeping that in mind is, is pretty huge. So as we go through, and if we were to try and graph, and I guess we can use that one, uh, if we were to try and graph our kinetic energy versus our speed, uh, we'd recognize and we want to make our y is equal to everything else. So ek is equal to 1 half mv squared. Uh, we'd look at this relationship from this, and we know that it is a squared relationship. The squared relationship would not produce a straight line graph. So what we want to do um, is rather than just doing y and x or manipulate re responding variable, we actually want to graph the proportionality itself. So I'm going to graph instead of v, I'm going to graph v squared versus kinetic energy. Uh, and in doing that, it's essentially saying that well, kinetic energy has a squared relationship or squared proportionality to speed. It's got a direct relationship to speed squared. And if it is a direct relationship, it's always gonna produce this nice straight line that goes through our origin. Perfect, so all it is, 100%, is just graphing, oops, uh, is just graphing the proportionality. Once we've graphed our proportionality, everything else is pretty much the same as what we looked at yesterday. So we look at our graph equation in terms of, dang it, our graph equation in terms of y is equal to mx plus b. I'm gonna take the keyboard off this tablet actually. Uh, y is equal to mx plus b, uh, where y is kinetic energy which is gonna be equal to slope times x. x in this case is v squared. And because it's a direct relationship, there is no y-intercept. So we've got our graph equation, our known equation, we wanna make it look exactly the same. So I've got ek is equal to everything else on my uh, graph equation. I need ek is equal to everything else on my known equation. So that's gonna be one half mv squared. And then same thing that we looked at the other day, we say, well, ek, that's the same thing as ek. So then I take ek from this side, which is slope times v squared. And I say it's the same thing as ek from this side, which is one half m v squared. Now if I wanted to figure out the significance of slope, it's fairly straightforward. I just rearrange and solve for slope. Uh, you can have a look and you can say, oh, well, v squared is actually going to cancel out. So the significance of slope, slope is equal to one half of the mass. And that's kind of what we mentioned yesterday, was slope is always going to tell us something about those controlled variables, right? So it's not always super easy to see. 
uh, but we can usually make sense out of it. Now, a very common question for this is, could we solve for mass? Now, if we actually had numbers, we were actually graphing this, we were actually calculating the slope, fairly straightforward to rearrange and solve for mass. So the example that we've got in our workbooklet, this is page, let's see, page 99 we're looking at right now, page 99. Um, we got the period of rotation is varied and the resulting orbital speed is measured. All other variables are held constant. So somebody might be swinging something around in a circle at a constant speed. Terrible drawing in the corner there, but we get the idea. So. Uh, things that I want to look at first is, well, what is my manipulated responding and, and controlled variables? Uh, what we're going to need to do once we figure that out is sketch the straightened graph, figure out some units for the slope, and then uh, use the significance of the slope to determine the radius. So as we go through and as we check this out, um, again, our manipulated variable, let's just go back to that actually, our period of rotation is varied. So period is gonna be manipulated variable. It's varied, that's the thing that we're changing. Uh, and the resulting speed, so that's gonna be our responding variable, is measured. Everything else is controlled variable. So controlled variables for this uh, would be the radius. And well, two and pi are obviously are not gonna change. So radius is gonna be our controlled variable. So as I go through and as I check this out, um, I'd start to look at this and I'd start to say, okay, well, what type of relationship do I have between my manipulated and responding variable? We always want our responding variable equal to everything else. So you can see we start with that original equation and we have our responding variable equal to everything else. Remember that responding variable is equal to speed. Uh, and then from there, I can look at speed and period, they have that inverse relationship. So same thing that we looked at before. If I were just to graph our manipulated versus our responding variable, we'd end up with a curvy line. Um, well, in this case, it'd be decreasing and look something like this. But if I graph the relationship itself, right, or the proportionality itself, so V has a direct relationship with one over T, I'm gonna end up with my Nice straight line direct relationship graph. Perfect, easy to solve for that. So my units for slope, there's a couple different ways you could actually check this out, but a real easy way, we know that slope is equal to rise over run. And our units for rise, well, if it's in speed, it's meters per second. And that's divided by Let's see, that's divided by one over period. One over period would be one over seconds. So one over seconds. Uh, seconds are actually gonna cancel, so our slope, our units should be in meters if I've done everything correctly here. Um, perfect, okay. So we got our graph equation or our known equation now is our next step. So the graph equation as I look at it, we always want to start with y is equal to mx plus b. Uh, so in this case, y is equal to the speed. Uh, m is our slope and we'll not be lazy. We'll actually write the word slope. Um, x is one divided by the period. And then we'll notice again that our y-intercept looks like it perfectly goes through zero. If it's a direct relationship, it should. Our known equation that we had, uh, as it was written, V times period is equal to two pi r. Again, we wanna make that look as much as possible like our graph equation. So we're gonna have V is equal to everything else. So it's two pi r over the period. Now I know as we go through and as we put these together, I know speed is equal to speed. So from this side, we've got slope times one over the period. And from the other side, we've got two pi r divided by the period. Uh, now again, if I wanted to rearrange and solve for the slope, um, I'd see that period cancels and the significance of slope is two 
pi r. Now, the other way that we could have looked at the units, if we start to go in through here, and this is a great way to double check if I start to go in through here, uh, is well, if I'm looking for slope and I'm looking for the units for slope, so units for slope, I'd say, okay, well, slope must have the same units as all this stuff. Well, two doesn't have a unit, pi doesn't have a unit, radius is measured in meters. So the only unit that I have on this entire side is meters and slope must be measured therefore in meters. Uh, so same sort of idea. Now the only other part of this is, well, what if the question is asking for radius? Like what if we actually knew, I'm gonna cross that off, um, just cause it's kind of extra, I suppose. But um, what if I actually knew the slope and I was looking for the radius? So that's my next little piece that I wanna deal with here. Um, is I'd say, well, slope is equal to two pi r, so the radius must be equal to slope over 2 pi. Piece of cake, right? So we can again figure something out about that controlled variable. Awesome, perfect. So next illustration, this is kind of a big one. It shows us two different things. It shows us how we can go through and how we can use uh, a piece of graph paper, which by the way, I'll put graph paper. Uh, if it's not already up there, I will put graph paper that you can print off on our Google Classroom. Uh, or, and I would really highly recommend this, or you can use your graphing calculator. So like a TI-83, 84, 85, any of those pieces. Um, it's gonna save a ton of time and a ton of work if you just use your graphing calculator for each of these pieces. So let's check this out. This is, uh, let me find the page number here. Uh, this is on page 100 of the workbook that we've got. So we've got a physics 30 student performed a circular motion experiment. He held the mass of an object and its circular speed constant. So mass, that must be a controlled variable and speed also a controlled variable. He then investigated the effect of the changing the radius. So radius, where am I even gonna write this? There's not a ton of space. Radius is our manipulated variable. So that's the thing that's changing. Um, investigated the effect of changing the radius of circular motion on the centripetal force required. So that one's gonna be our responding variable. Uh, the results are shown in the table below. So one thing that we kind of know with this, typically our manipulated variables always listed first in tables and our responding variable is always listed second. Uh, so whether that's left, right or top, bottom, same sort of idea. Um, but we've got this all set up. It looks like the information's there for us. So the two things that we want to check out is we want to straighten the curve and find the equation for the line of best fit using the known formula, which you probably recognize from physics 20. Fc is equal to mv squared over r. And then uh, part two of this, if we used a five kilogram mass, determine the average circular speed of the object by using the significance of the slope. And remember, speed was one of those controlled variables. So the slope always give us information about those controlled variables. So as we jump into it here, um, again, we wanna make our formula. We wanna have y is equal to everything else. So our responding variable is always the thing that's isolated. Uh, we can check out the relationship here, so f, C looks like it's gonna have an inverse relationship with the radius, which is gonna give us a graph that's not quite so pretty. So F, C versus R, where it's gonna decrease at a constant rate like that, or at a changing rate, I guess I should say. Um, again, we don't really want that. We actually want the direct relationship so if I make a little sketch, well, it's a terrible sketch, I can graph one divided by r, and that will give me a perfectly straight line, even more perfect than I can draw on the little tablet here. Awesome. So again, graph the relationship is the key. I should have just jumped to those ones with the nice pictures, but that's okay. So we had all this data. This is the bottom of page 100 still, page 100. Uh, the math is already done for us here. So we've got FC versus the radius, but we really want to change that radius. We don't want radius anymore because uh, we want to graph the relationship um, or graph the proportionality. So I need to go through and I need to uh, change my radius to one divided by radius. And notice what we've done with the units as well. One divided by radius will have 
units of one divided by meters. Uh, one thing to note with this, and this is a place where people often make common mistakes, is when I go through and I figure out one over the radius, I do one over 0.1 and then one divided by 0.2, and then one divided by 0.3. Um, so keep in mind, like lots of people will go through and be like, oh, well, one divided by 0 0.1 is 10, so one divided by 0.2 must be 20, and one divided by 0.3 must be 30. Uh, not at all the case. Actually plug the numbers in and see what you get. So once we've got this, there's, there's two different methods that we could look at. Uh, method one is using some actual graph paper. So we'd have to go through, uh, we'd create an appropriate title, must contain manipulated responding variable. We'd put our manipulated variable, in this case, the uh, centripetal force on our y-axis. We'd figure out appropriate scales. Uh, same thing with our responding variable, our one over radius with appropriate units, figure out appropriate scales. Uh, we'd have to go through, we'd have to plot each and every one of those data points. Uh, we might see that one of those data points is an outlier. Um, so cross that one off, get rid of it. We take our ruler for our line of best fit. We'd throw that down. Uh, we take two points. So here's a point right here. It's getting kind of messy. Here's a point right here. And then we can calculate the slope. So again, with those two points, calculate the slope. Turns out the slope, when we look at it this way, is 142 newtons uh, times meters. And uh, yeah, so it's not so bad, right? It's, it's definitely stuff that we've done before. It's just more than a little time consuming. Uh, the second method that we want to look at here is using our graphing calculator. Uh, and this is on page 102. And I'm just going to kind of walk you through this. Page 102 uh, goes through pretty much all the steps, like every single button that you need to push in order to, uh, in order to make this work out. Um, I am going to walk you through it as well though. Alrighty, so we should all have our calculators out now, our graphing calculators. Uh, whether you're using the app on your phone or a real calculator, it's pretty much going to be the same thing no matter how you look at it. Uh, so first thing that I would probably want to do is make sure that everything is clean and we get a fresh start. Uh, so if we push second function, memory. We don't want to reset everything at this point. Uh, but what we want to do is clear all the lists. So essentially clear all the data that could have been graphed before. Uh, so that is number four. I'm just going to hit number four and then hit enter. So everything should be good and clear. The next thing that we want to do is we want to fill or populate those lists. So I'm going to push the stat button, S-T-A-T, -A uh, right beside the little scroll pad, I suppose. Uh, and we want to edit our list, which is number one. And then we can start plugging all these numbers in. Uh, so just kind of keeping in mind, list one is gonna be our X, which is our manipulated variable. Uh, list two is gonna be our Y, which is our responding variable. So I'm gonna put one over radius in X, and I'm gonna put uh, my FC in list two. Uh, so as I go through and I start plugging these in, uh, let's just see here. So I've got 10, then I've got 6.67, then I've got uh, 5.00, and I'm not going to make you watch this, so I'm going to put the video on pause here. I suggest you do the same. So populate list 1 with your x, that's one divided by the radius. Populate list two with your centripetal force. That's the one that's shown right here. Um, put the video on pause, I'm gonna do the same, and then we'll come back when it's all complete. All right, so once we uh, have all of our lists plugged in properly, should look something like this. One thing to note once we get those list one and list two plugged in, um, just make sure that you've got the same number of entries in list one as list two. Uh, that's a pretty common mistake and it won't graph anything for you if they are different. Uh, so if we go to graph, nothing happens. So there's a couple things we got to do first. Uh, the first one is hit second function, stat plot. And you'll notice that all of our plots are actually turned off. Uh, we want to turn plot number one on. So if I just hit number one, uh, notice that it's currently highlighted off. I want to hit on. So 
perfect. Uh, the type I can leave alone, we might want to just double check that our X list, so things we want our manipulated variable is indeed list one, which we said we would do before. Our Y variable is indeed list two. And then I can hit graph and still nothing happens. Any guesses what the problem is? If you guessed window, you're probably on to something. So when I look at my x's, my x's, remember, they go from about so 2.5 up to 10. So if I set that from 0 up to 10 and a scale of 1, that should work out just fine. Uh, my y's, on the other hand, this is something that's throwing us for a bit of a curveball here. So I'm going to set uh, my y minimum at 0, and then it looks like it goes up to 1,450. So I'm just going to set that y maximum at about 15 hundred and I think that that should work all right now when I hit graph uh, very nice there we start to see that straight line relationship um, it kind of looks like everything would make a nice neat straight line except for this little one right here uh, and when we looked at the uh, previous example when we looked at graphing it on a piece of paper uh, we saw that was an outlier as well so what we want to do in our graphing calculator to make sure that's not going to mess up our slope is we actually want to get rid of that little point so it is the second largest in terms of the y and in terms of the x so I go back into my stats I edit and I want to get rid of the second largest in terms of my x so that's the 6.67 I'm just going to delete that one and same thing with the y that's my 1200 I'm just gonna push delete on that one and then I'm going to regraph this and see if it looks a little bit better perfect so just double checking that we got rid of that pot spot that was right about there and everything else looks like it's in a nice neat straight line So the next piece that we want to check out here is, uh, well, better check that I'm Next piece that we want to check out here is just to make sure that, um, well, not even to make sure, just to get our info for this. Uh, so I'm going to go to stat again. I want to, in this case, scroll over to calculate. And this should be, uh, a straight line, so we're going to go to number four. It's a linear regression in the form of ax plus b. So I'm just going to hit number four, hit enter. Now, if you're dealing with a TI-84, uh, everything should already be set up. Just hit enter a bunch of times until it starts calculating for you. And then it'll give us y is equal to ax plus b, where a, that's our slope, is 144.85, and b, that's our y-intercept, is 0.5. Nine. Now that's not a zero y intercept, but when we look at everything that's going on the y, 360, 415, 490, 580, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that's pretty close to zero. So we're actually gonna, when we plug this in to double check that we've done things uh, well, we're gonna forget about that y intercept entirely. Um, if it still looks like it fits the data perfectly, it means it's gonna be negligible and we don't actually need to include it. So, Let's just find this here. Uh, and then as we are like showing your work for this one, this is kind of what I would, I would expect people to draw for us. So a sketch of the graph, it does not need to be a perfect sketch of the graph, but it needs to give you an idea of your scale for your Y and your scale for your X, labeled Y, label X, and then an appropriate title, uh, showing your results. So what exactly we got for our results, Y is equal to AX plus B, A was 144.85, B was 0.593, and then figure out our slope which was M including units so making sure that we're being very very clear on what slope is and we're including units so if you're using your calculator uh, this is the work that you would need to show so again <coughs> if we want to double check that this actually uh, makes sense we probably want to graph this right so if I go to y is equal to I'm gonna do 144.85 and then uh, X, where's that little button for X? There you are. Uh, and then I'm not even gonna include my Y intercept. So Y is equal to 144.85X. When I hit graph, we should see it match those dots pretty much perfectly, our data pretty much perfectly, and it goes through the origin. So again, we are ignoring the Y intercept in that case. Perfect, so we've pretty much figured out everything we need in our calculator. It was a bit time consuming because we're working through it the first time ever, but same sort of idea as usual. So let's check out 
the next couple little pieces. So regardless of whether we use an actual piece of graph paper or whether we've used our graphing calculator, which the more you get used to, the quicker it'll go, uh, the next steps for this are to figure out, well, what is the significance of the slope? Um, so I'd start with my graph equation, y is equal to mx, so y is fc, uh, m is the slope, and which by the way we just calculated, and x is one divided by r. So if I wanted to simplify this a little bit, I'd say fc is equal to slope over r. Now I've got two different formulas that have fc. Remember, I've got my graphical formula and I've got my known, and I'll maybe write graph over here as well. Uh, as we put them together, we'd say, I usually like to start with fc is equal to fc, but as we put them together, we get slope uh, over r is equal to mv squared over r. Turns out that slope is equal to m times v. So if I wanted to rearrange and solve for the speed, so how fast this person was whipping the thing around their head, uh, I would do exactly that. Rearrange, solve for speed, so divide both sides by m, and then take the square root, and we are there. Excellent, very, very good. Um, so that's pretty much the lesson for today. Um, all that we're really talking about here is taking curved lines, so whether it's like this or like this or whatever, and turning it into a straight line, a linear graph. Um, two ways to do that on a piece of graph paper or through a graphing calculator. Uh, make sure you're doing a bit of practice here, page 103 to page, uh, let's see here, 106 page 103 to 106 uh, will get you the info that you need. Uh, and again, all of those steps for the graphing calculator that we just talked about uh, are completely 100% on page 102 and 103 of your, uh, or even just 102 of your workbook. Uh, so check them out, practice it, make sure you know what the heck's going on. Uh, anyways, that's it for now. Uh, we'll actually start talking about the magnetism piece in this next little bit uh, in the next video, which is some pretty neat stuff. Anyways, have a good rest of your day, Physics 30s, and we'll see you again soon.